Good morning. I'd like to use for a sermonic theme today, making a withdrawal, making a withdrawal. Brian's fiance, fiance was given a 400 vanilla prepaid Visa gift card for Christmas. Have any of you ever been given one of those gift cards? Get a little excited about them too, don't you? <laughs> what you gonna do, how you gonna spend your money? Well, Brian's fiance was excited about her gift card. It was $400. They checked the card out to see the amount on it. You know, you call that phone number and they were informed that they had $400 on this gift card. So Brian's fiance decided, hey, let's do some grocery shopping. It's one thing to go to the grocery store with $100. It's quite another to go to the grocery store with $400. So, you know, they were dropping stuff in. They were splurging. They were getting excited. They were happy that they had this gift card to pay for their grocery bill. They get all the way up to the cash reg register, and kabam, they pull out their vanilla Visa gift card. You already know this story doesn't end well, don't you? When they went to use the gift card, they were told the card was depleted and that they had a whole balance of $3. Brian was shocked. But more than shocked, they were embarrassed. You know, you got a line behind you, your basket's looking good, and you got your cart filled, and now you don't have the money to pay for all the food you put in the cart. Brian couldn't figure out what had happened. His family had used these gift cards for years with no problem at all as gifts to one another. They returned home, sadly, without the groceries to put the missing pieces of the puzzle together. Why didn't this card work? They went and looked in on the information, and at 4.45 a.m., someone through a cash app had withdrawn $148. One minute later, someone withdrew $249. Now, before I move forward, I pray none of you listening to me will be tempted to do what I'm about to share with you today. Security experts say there's a new trick that scammers use, that they go into a store, they pull off several cards off the rack, they flip them over, they take out their camera, take a picture of the cards, and then they put the cards back on the rack. And so, periodically, they test out to see if someone's bought the card, right? And there's some money on the card. And at 4.45, Brian and his fiance got most of their money, except for $3, taken. Vanilla gift card refused to comment. Imagine that you don't have the resources you thought you had. Imagine getting all the way to the grocery store in the line at the register and pulling out your Christmas card to discover not only do you not have what you thought you had, but all you got is $3 to pay for the groceries in your cart. Imagine some impatient person behind you rolling their eyes. That would be one of us. Imagine pulling out another card and having it also get declined. Imagine going to the store and discovering you do not have the funds to buy what you came for. Imagine not having enough financial resources to handle your business. Imagine not having the resources to address some of your basic needs. Imagine not having more than enough. For some, they don't have to imagine. Words I've heard a lot since the pandemic are stress, overwhelmed, exhausted, depressed, confused, sick, worried. I hear these words with more and more frequency. All of these words are indicators that funds are being withdrawn from our well-being account. Honestly, Emotionally, spiritually, mentally, and all of the above, maybe some of us don't have the funds to cover the purchase either. Don't have the wherewithal to deal with what is coming our way. <clears throat> don't have the answers to address what plagues the soul. Don't have the funds to cope with life. Ever wake up and feel like you just want to sleep this day off? Just want this one to pass you on by? 
Sometimes by the time we realize that we don't have enough funds, we're already broke. We're already at the cash register thinking we got something we don't. This is where we enter the biblical text today. Jesus didn't have enough in his account either. And an odd thing happens when he hears of John's distress, he withdraws. Now you might have expected Jesus to show up because that's what Jesus does. Jesus shows up or maybe you expected him to say a prayer or at least Jesus could have sent someone even though this was still relatively early in his ministry. He could have performed a miracle. People will always have an expectation of you and for you, what you should do and how you should be and how you should handle the situation and what you could have done while sitting on the sideline. But on this day, Jesus sort of leaves us hanging. This text says he withdrew. He didn't go to the ATM. He simply took himself and went somewhere else. Scholars will say John's arrest was dangerous for Jesus, and Jesus discerns it's best for him to move to a different location. Withdrawals were really being made on his life. His task and his road and his path were not easy peasy at all. As we learned on last week, once the word got out, show and tell time was on and folks were on his path, people were curious, wanted to see, wanted to hear, wanted miracles, wanted signs. He learned that John was being harassed. You know what Jesus did? He withdrew. There was this lady, let's call her Lady D. She was a teacher by profession, but more than being a teacher, she loved being a mom. And then one day she discovered something even more beautiful than being a mom, being a grandma. This was priceless. She loved having her grandbabies come to visit and feeding them stuff she wouldn't have dreamed of feeding her own kids. And the best part is, you know what that best part is, she got to send them home. Her family and friends and church were her life. She could dole out love like it was nobody business. But she also had this other day, she called it her go to hell day. She was the proud owner of lots of fashionably style pajamas and on this particular day she put them on and declared it was a day where she was planning on doing absolutely nothing. Her family understood these days and they left her alone. I imagine Jesus withdrawal similarly. I love you all but right now, right now, I gotta go. The teacher shot by the six-year-old is gonna be okay but wow withdrawal. Google lays off, Google lays off 20,000 workers this past week. Withdrawal. A lady approached by a carjacker begins to scream and holler, caught on video by someone's ring bell. Her acting could have won an Oscar except for it wasn't acting. The carjacker flees the scene. Withdrawal. 11 candidates for the fifth ward. Withdrawal. Republican congressman congressman in a web of lies. I didn't say I was Jewish. I said I was Jewish. It wasn't that he lied, because lying is nothing new. It was to the extent that he lied and won. Withdrawal. Everything in life is going up except for wages. Somebody ought to say amen. Withdrawal. There are so many issues to fight for. Sometimes you have to withdraw from your own space for your own well-being, but not forever. People are on 10 these days. You don't know if you're walking next to a time bomb or not. Withdrawal. Your loved one or someone close proximity to you is on psycho. Withdrawal. Lady announces she wants a divorce. Her husband kills everyone in the house. Seven people dead. Withdrawal. Some of you, us, need time off the grill the grill, time off the grid, disconnect, really, but you'll be back. It's too much, too, too much happening in our world, happening in our community, happening in our families, happening in our life. Jesus made a qualitative decision on behalf of himself. He withdrew. Scholars will argue he wasn't near the danger, but he still withdrew. He knew what he needed for himself, and you don't have to be in the physical proximity of danger to be impacted by danger. Sometimes we have to put on our PJs and let folks know the shop is closed for today. You all are going to have to figure it out for yourselves, and you are going to have to do you to the bones. 
In the words of Kenny G, you got to know when to what? Hold them, know when to fold them, know when to walk away, and know when to run. In withdrawal mode, you got to know when to walk away. You got to know when to withdraw. This climate isn't good to you or for you. Withdrawal. Others shouldn't be the only one making withdrawals on your life. Sometimes, as a self-care act, you need to withdraw yourself. The Negro spiritual deeply sorrowful mentions steal away, steal away, steal away to Jesus. Steal away, steal away home. I ain't got long to stay here. On the surface, this song is talking about going home to Jesus, but if you'll just peel back the layers, the psalmist is talking about time and space alone, a moment away from the glare and heaviness of slavery, a moment away from the heaviness of living, a moment where one can inhale and exhale, a moment to withdraw as an act of self-care, especially for those who are severely marginalized in this world. Just as Jesus withdrew, so can we steal away. Nobody will tell it to you. Nobody will give it to you. They'll look at you. They'll say you look tired. They'll say you look <laughs> knocked up. But they won't give it to you by withdrawing. Jesus is not withdrawing from his purpose and his calling. He's not deciding in a moment of conflict. He's taking his marbles and he ain't coming back. He's leaving for good. He's taking the necessary time to rest and breathe and pray and refuel. He doesn't stay gone forever. And when he returns, it's back to business. But the, he does withdraw. And by withdrawing, I think he models for us a way of living our life. We can't always be on. We can't always be there for others. We can't always answer our phone. We can't always be following Christ. Sometimes we have to put the closed sign on the door so when people roll up, they know we are not open today. The love and compassion you so freely give to others as followers of Christ share a little of that with you. And you don't have to bank, break the bank to do so. Schedule a day for you. Schedule a day with you. Plan what are you going to do so when the time comes, you don't have to stand yourself up. Say a little prayer for yourself. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Donate to your own GoFundMe self-care page. Think about what you want to do on that time when you withdraw. What would be beneficial for you to make it through this year, 2023? And remember, withdrawing helps you to show up for others better. When you take time for yourself, it makes you a happier person and your joy is contagious. Put yourself on your schedule. And if you already do this well, and there are a few of you that are A-plus in this course, try to help somebody else do it for themselves. One worker was going through a difficult time and his co-workers noticed, but nobody tried to help him do better. So the message for today is to do you without apology or guilt. We always talk about doing others, but today's message is a reminder that we all need balance. Nothing is bad out of moderation, but we are called to withdraw, period. Because maybe, maybe you are or you aren't the lady showing up at the grocery store without sufficient funds. What she thought she had, she didn't. Maybe you are or you aren't showing up for others when you are barely, barely making it yourself. Maybe you are or you aren't the person who everyone turns to but has very few people you can depend on yourself. Maybe the depth of your struggles are not fully known to those around you. Maybe you are, you aren't wondering if you have enough to get by on this week. You are worth the time and energy. Take time to rest and renew. Take time off. Take time to wear your nice PJs. Take time to do absolutely nothing and be thrilled about it. Take retreat. Take vacations. Take solitude, take silence. Don't answer the phone sometimes. And you, make you your goal this year. Make that withdrawal, because guess what? Others will, others will, others will. 
it's okay sometimes to withdraw. Amen.